Namaste and a very warm good evening to all of you. My name is Giri Raj Singh Shekhawat, and the topic of my presentation is Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation, Intensity and Duration Effects on Tinnitus Suppression. This slide pretty much summarizes my entire PhD project. I'm using a combination of hearing aids and transcranial direct current stimulation for tinnitus suppression. However, in my today's talk, I'll focus about my pilot study which was done to optimize the parameters of transcranial direct current stimulation for tinnitus suppression. So, what exactly is tinnitus? Tinnitus is defined as auditory phantom perception of sound. It's the constant annoying, ringing, buzzing, hissing sound in the absence of its external sound source. That's how it sounds like. Now, can you all imagine if you have to live with this sound 24-7 in your head, what would be your, your condition? Yes, tinnitus can lead to anger, frustration, poor communication, lack of sleep, and on the whole, the person gets trapped in the vicious cycle between constant state of anxiety and attention towards tinnitus. Tinnitus can have detrimental impact on the overall quality of life of the sufferer, and on extreme cases, it can also lead to suicidal tendencies. Now, these are some of the famous people who suffer from tinnitus. And what I want now is, I want you all at least to guess one or two names in the picture. Can you say some names? There you go. And? Well done. Yeah, these are just few of the people. Now, as far as the prevalence is concerned, in the United States, there are 50 million people who suffer from some form of tinnitus. As far as New Zealand is concerned, approximately 15 to 20 percent of general population suffers from tinnitus, which would be around 400,000 people. And one in 10 tinnitus sufferers finds it really catastrophic. And here comes the most unfortunate part. Majority of the times when these tinnitus sufferers try to reach out for professional help, globally the most common response which they get from professionals is, well, there's nothing much which can be done for your condition. You may have to learn to live with it. And I hope with the advancement of new technology and new techniques coming in, this trend should change. And one such technique which might be instrumental in bringing this, in bringing this kind of change could be Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation, or TDCS. What happens in TDCS is, we use rubber electrodes, which are then encased in sponges, and then placed on the target area of the head. We use these straps to ensure that the electrode stays at the right place, and then, with the help of these wires, we connect these electrodes to this little device here, which delivers mild electric current to the person's head. Now, this is nothing like electrocuting someone. It's totally non-invasive, painless, simple, and most importantly, a safe technique. As far as the research in the area of tinnitus and TDCS is concerned, it's still in its infancy. There are only 10 published studies done so far. The first published study came in the year 2006, and the latest one is my study, which recently got published. And if you look at all these 10 studies, they have used very different parameters about tinnitus suppression. So basically, there's no uniformity about which setting works the best for tinnitus suppression. And that was the main reason of carrying out my pilot study, which is one of its first. So based on this review, I had to take four very important decisions for my study. The first one was, what should be the polarity of TDCS? Now based on polarity, TDCS can be anodal or cathodal. In anodal TDCS, it increases the excitability of underlying cortex by neuronal depolarization. And unanimously, all the studies have shown that it's the anodal TDCS which leads to tinnitus suppression as compared to cathodal or sham. So it was pretty much simple and straightforward that I'll be using anodal TDCS for my study. But as far as the intensity and duration were concerned, there was a lot of different values people have used. So there was no uniformity. So based on the literature, I decided to use 1 milliamp and 2 milliamp current intensities, each for 10, 15, and 20 minutes. So in the total, I had six different settings to try and study their impact on tinnitus suppression. And here comes the most puzzling question. In what should be the site of stimulation? Now based on this aspect, the existing literature can be divided into two groups. 
Certain people have used LTA or the left temporoparietal area. Others have used dorsolateral prefrontal cortex with varied amount of success. And I was a bit confused that what should I do at that moment, you know? So I want to thank Plevnia and his colleagues for carrying out this beautiful study where they studied 12 different head locations and the impact of stimulating those locations on tinnitus suppression. And it was the LTA which emerged as a winning setting. And I thought, okay, fine, I'll be using LTA for my study. So the main objective of my study was to find the interaction between intensity and duration for tinnitus relief. And as I mentioned before, there were total six different settings to try and study their impact on tinnitus suppression. Methods. My study was approved by University of Auckland's Human Participants Ethical Committee. There were total 25 participants with a mean age of 54 years, and the age range was from 28 years to 78 years. Uh, all the participants had a minimum score of 25 on tinnitus functional index. Now, tinnitus functional index is a standard questionnaire which we use for assessment of clients with tinnitus. And a minimum score of 25 indicates the problem is moderate and it needs some intervention. For safety reason, all the participants had to fill a neurological checklist which was then screened by a neurologist and only those participants which were approved by the neurologist were included in my study. And the evaluation tools which I used in my study were clinical global improvement scale and visual analog scale for tinnitus loudness. Coming to the results. Now before you look at this slide, let me explain what transient tinnitus suppression means. Now it's defined as a minimum one point reduction in tinnitus loudness as measured on the visual analog scale for tinnitus loudness. This was the standard definition used by majority of other researchers working in this area. So I also use the same definition. Now, if you look at this graph here, the x-axis represents the point change in tinnitus loudness, and y-axis represents the total number of participants. For some technical reason, I think it's, it's not coming here. So on the whole, there were total 14 participants who experienced transient tinnitus suppression, and 11 participants didn't experience any change immediately after the stimulation. As far as the overnight changes were concerned, there were 11 participants who experienced improvement, four experienced worsening, and 10 participants didn't experience any change. The important thing to note here is, all these participants who experienced improvement or worsening, they revert back to their original symptoms after 24 hours, which basically means that the impact was transient. It wasn't long-lasting. <coughs> the x-axis here represents the duration, the y-axis represents mean tinnitus loudness change, and the intensity is shown here. The one million is the cross, two million is circles. And if you look at this little asterisk here, the pink one, it was the two million current intensity and 20 minutes duration, which lead to statistically significant suppression of tinnitus as compared to other settings. And similar results, okay, this slide is missing for some reason. Similar results were seen even for the mean clinical global improvement scale as well. Now. Here, those participants who experienced overnight improvement of tinnitus symptoms are shown in the circles. Those who didn't experience any change or experienced worsening are shown in the crosses. So this slide basically shows that there was a marginal interaction between overnight improvement of tinnitus symptoms and duration. And similar kind of marginal interaction was seen with intensity as well. Which basically means that those participants who tend to respond positively immediately after the simulation were the ones who tend to experience overnight improvement as well. So, based on these results, it's safe to say that TDCS can be a potential tool for clients with tinnitus, and it was the two million current intensity and 20 minutes duration which was the winning setting. Coming to the limitations, the washout period between my stimulation sessions were 10 minutes, which may not be sufficient enough to totally rule out the cumulative impact of the overall stimulation session, and this study wasn't a sham control design. Having said that, we should remember the fact that the main objective of this study was to find a dose-response relationship, that what happens when we vary intensity and duration on tinnitus symptoms. And now, I have the results with me, and I'm already in the middle of a main clinical trial, which is double-blind, sham control, with much longer washout period and long-term follow-ups. And to be very precise, 
by the end of this month, I should have the data of the entire study with me, and hopefully, I should be able to share some groundbreaking results with you all. So I want to thank my supervisors, Dr. Grant Searchfield, Dr. Kathy Stinner, and Josh up there. Thank you so much for all the technical help. Thank you so much.